Hey, greetings YouTube. Performance reviews where I give you how-tos and reviews from the technician's point of view. Today we're going to service a Mila U1 or S7 upright. Let's see what she sounds like. Unfortunately, the owner did not send me the handle. I did happen to have a brand new handle laying around uh, from when I used to own one of these. I just kind of always keep spare parts around for things I own. Um, that's always a good idea. And cords and switches are usually wear items or will need to be replaced on vacuum. So that's why I kept that around. It could be quieter, but that's not bad. The good news is uh, it doesn't sound bad at all, and everything else looks all right. Um, so besides from the back door's not on there all the way, that wasn't clipped in, and we can see the debris under here from that happening. So that's the uh, explanation about that. Yeah, that bag dock is slightly bent, but not super bent. Um, another thing we noticed, and I see this is we can see that the filter when it was changed wasn't quite cut to the right shape so that can cause uh, problems so we're gonna go ahead and wash this and let's see if this just will pop off for me yeah All right. so now you can see the extent of what has gone into the motor and when we open this up Lo and behold, the HEPA filter is bad as well. So that stuff is trash. Um, ooh, that is really bad. Let's see inside the filter chamber. Bring the camera closer. Uh, yeah, you can see all the debris and stuff that shouldn't be in there. Or at least I can see. I don't know if you can see on that. But there, there's stuff that shouldn't be in there. Uh, so we're going to have to take that apart and clean that up. And luckily this one was shipped to me without the tools. So I don't need to worry about taking that off. That's nice. Uh, but you should just take a T20 and shove it in the hole. And... Step on the vacuum. <laughs> Take the vacuum off the bench, step on the vacuum. Now the handle's off the vacuum. Again. I just dropped the brand new handle on the floor. That was nice. Um, the other thing I noticed is, I don't know what happened there, but... That's not very confident inspiring on that. Ooh. See if I can pop that in somehow. Um, one of the things I always do is kind of fold this down and we like to check for blockages in the hose there. Uh, a lot of people kind of go ape shit doing that. Um, is that even a politically, can I even use that word on YouTube? Am I gonna have to censor myself um, there? All right. So we gotta knock this panel loose. Just like so. And you can see there are pry marks from somebody who weren't so nice to it. Ah. And you can see fine dirt just gets stuck on that. So we got to wash that. And we're going to separate uh, top from bottom and all that stuff. And the best thing to do with that is get our T20. Uh, the majority of the screws on this vacuum are the same. 
so you don't have to worry about that. I'm gonna explain why I'm pulling this section off. This machine's gonna get completely broken down and washed, which a lot of these don't need to have done, but when the bag gets compromised, that's super important. Um, all right, and we'll be seeing a friend of mine about some of this stuff. So the reason this is getting pulled off is that's yucko. You can see how gross that is. That needs to be something needs to be done with that. Actually, if I had to guess, I would say this was either in a flood or a dog peed on the outside of it. I think I'm gonna probably want a second set of gloves here in a minute. Ooh, you heard that crack? That's the sound of the casing. That was interesting. That tells me somebody was in here. Or somebody who didn't know there. We'll see. Right now. And a 10. Now, if you don't have a proper set of screwdrivers, don't do this. I would encourage you to just bring this to your authorized Mila dealer. And I work, I'm currently kind of in a gray zone. I work in conjunction with several authorized Mila dealers. Uh, and I do work for them occasionally and all sorts of, call me a consultant for lack of a, a better word. Um, so now this kind of looks nasty. We are going to put on some gloves, which have already seen some nastiness. I, I like to reuse, when we're not dealing with a virus, I like to reuse my gloves. This is just going to get a nice little love tap. Yep. So I bet this was not working right. I can show you right now how I know if somebody's been in here and didn't know what they were doing. So right here we have... This should be capped in there. And when you take the cover off, it's easy to knock this out of place. And where it was sitting, it wasn't actually making a proper seal. So that tells me that somebody has been in here. And the other thing that tells me somebody's been in here is these things can break off. I'll be doing the rest of this. Just gonna grab the pieces that need to be washed right away. All right. Ooh, gecko. And grab the wedge. All right, this is the newer style uh, brush motor. They made a, a revision on the gear because the belt was actually so tough it would chew up those gears. Um, you generally don't need to change a belt on this machine ever. All right, you do need to lubricate it and adjust the belt just because uh, the belt is geared and it's timed a certain way. And the the thing it holds tension on it in a car timing belt is like hydraulic or spring loaded or something like that. This has a wedge that has to be manually adjusted. Um, so that that's kind of a something they've been doing forever and it, it works just fine but if somebody doesn't know what they are doing it does not work just fine next thing we're gonna do is grab my central vacuum and just suck out some of the remnants all right that's good So the motor, you see here how he's moving around. Um, we're gonna secure the motor again. And you have to be careful because these can be one-time use if you don't know what you're doing. Why we're doing this operation, I should say I'm securing this. It doesn't need to be in there super good. You just want it in there so it's not flopping around on us. Um, so now we're gonna start 
pulling the rest of this apart. And I'm going to get my drill out because there's going to be a bunch of screws. Start pulling things apart. So those two screws, I'll explain what those do, but those are coming out on this one. The other screws that are going to come out uh, are the swivel neck screws that attach the lower section from the upper section that houses the bag. And to do that, I need an extension on mine. I used to have a really long 20, and I, I haven't been able to find another 6-inch 20. Um, that's something I really like. Let's do it now. All right. those screws out this kind of just peels apart and the reason it's so sticky you can see how nasty this is uh, whoa just knocked a bunch of stuff down and you can take a look at the condition of one of these screws that will focus well super nasty that's coming apart so uh, there's, there's like a hack to washing this. Um, if you have a sprayer, so don't put this in the dishwasher, uh, but if you have a sprayer, you can actually wash all this, flush this out, but you cannot get any water up here where there's a circuit board. So don't try sticking this section in the dishwasher. Um, oof. Now to the rest of this, which is, man, that's just... I see why this got sent to me. I could see a I could see a dealer not wanting to do this. This one's pretty bad, <laughs> but we'll get take we'll get taken care of. Uh, so yeah, all the suction's channeled through here, by the way. Alright. As far as the wheels go. Uh, that's the thing a lot of people don't understand is how to remove the wheels um, Because on this cleaner the wheels are timed so again not something you want to do yourself bring it to your dealer who's familiar with it uh, Not every meal authorized dealer is familiar with it. Um, I got called into a We'll call it an interview. It was a very strange thing, but I got called in and they they uh, the vacuum store just needed attacking. You know, a little part-time work couldn't hurt, especially uh, when my day job um, and the type of work I usually do involves going to certain types of shows and stuff. And that that kind of got canceled due to C19, which I'm not really too happy with. Um, so the thing you can do with this is you can you can mark it. That's the that's the uh, easy thing to do if you if you really want. The other thing you can do is there's actually timing marks in here, and I'll, I'll see if I can get it to line up. All right, those are the timing marks right there, those little square things. And either you understand that they're there or you don't. But you can see, we'll do this side. You can see just like that. So. If you try to do it all the way down, it's out of time. And right there, now it is in time. When we open this up and fully lock this up, I have now pushed it out of time by one tooth. So if we want to retime it, we can lift up. There. There you go. So that's now in time again. So again, if you don't understand it, you can do little hand marks and a little bit of that the customer won't notice a little bit of sharpie on the bottom side of their machine underneath the cover so that's that's the cheater's way of doing it but that's uh, wheel timing in a nutshell 
Mila put out a great service video that when these first came out on DVD that showed how to to properly time this. Um, again, for those who d didn't understand, and I'll I'll leave that uh, to dealers who want to show that to their employees. But that that's a better explanation. Um, I might have it somewhere. I don't I don't know if it'd be a copyright yet violation or not if I re-uploaded that. Alright, so now we got the wheels off the machine. And again, you can see there's a timing mark right here. Right, if you look right next to it, there's a window with a timing mark. And we're off time, off time, just the start of that on time. Now you can see my Sharpie. So that's how we know when to put it back and how to put it back. Again, that continues to be a problem with some people that I don't know why that's uh, so abstract. Some of the other day commented on my video that I didn't understand how to retime the machine, and I thought that was really funny. In the same video that it shows me basically doing this. Now, I've done a service video on this machine before, but uh, we now have a 4K camera and stuff, so we're redoing a lot of these as I have them. Um, oh boy. We can see the stress fracture, and this is how I want it. The machine had a bit of a lean. Let me grab it see a stress fracture right here in the plastic. Um, so that is starting to break. So I'm going to attempt to see if I can find one of these under warranty. I have the, I have the stuff to warranty out uh, the machine for the gentleman. Um, so I have to actually send him an email and let him know that we're going to do that uh, on here. Man, that motor looks like shit. Uh, I guess this is why it was sent to me, is it's just pretty bad. All right. Uh, so all that looks pretty good. Oh, the, another thing is that this guy falls out, and you have to put him back in here when we put it together. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to strip some of the rest of this stuff out real quick. But we're going to go ahead and wash this stuff and turn the camera right, back I on. was about to go wash everything, and... This is Octavio. He's not supposed to be in the basement. He's supposed to be upstairs. And he didn't just sneak into the basement. The cat snuck past two doors to get into the basement, a door to get into my garage, and I caught him underneath my wife's car. Uh, so that was an unexpected part of this repair project. But he... Uh, He's never been in this room before, so he's very curious about that, but he's going to go back upstairs. All right. So this is the Mila original part for the foot pedal. And this one has a crack in it. Somebody was very rough with it, so we're going to replace it. There is the new part, and notice it comes with that thing. And that thing, you notice right here, old one comes out. <laughs> Very simple. Make sure it's nice and clean. And the new one with the spring goes in its place. Now, I will say, because it does pivot, uh, a little bit of grease couldn't hurt things here. And then where it pivots on this point, again, isn't going to hurt anything there because it's not a dirt way. There should be no dirt in this section. Uh, that part will just slide. in there like that. So that's how that goes on. So I have washed everything and all my parts have come in that I need to replace for this repair. So we're going to put this bad boy back together and it is completely stripped out uh, far beyond the point of which most people would strip out their machine. So we're going to start reassemble, reassembling the machine. Um, the first part is the yoke must come back in, along with the yoke hose and our wiring loom here. 
I'll explain this in just a second. Um, and if I could remember where everything went. <laughs> Okay, on the back side of this is this guy. It's interesting that the quick disconnects are mold, have this plastic thing molded around them. It's an interesting solution to what would normally just be flopping around in there. Again, that's why this is very, very solid, these machines. So they do things like this. Um, and then the Mila motor itself has one of these... Uh, where is it? I just saw it. There it is. One of them plugs in right there. Oops. So, all of that actually goes in its own little nook. Once I put this back, how it goes, I never remember exactly. It's very, very strange how everything sits in here. Everything has its place, just like every other Mila, but it is uh, a little bit on the, the strange side. Uh, that's why I don't usually tear them down this far. All right, that's probably everything dirty. I can take my gloves off. Everything else is going to be fairly clean. Uh, it's about uh, 95 degrees here in Denver, and it is a little bit on the warm side. So we'll just continue to work all this stuff in. These are actually hand-built one person start to finish in the Mila factory. So that's kind of an interesting fact. Uh, when you're taking apart as one person, there wasn't, there wasn't a machine. They actually are assembled with one person, uh, not using an assembly line for some reason. That's how they decided to make this particular vacuum. Uh, so much to Henry Ford's chagrin. All right, so as you see, we're, we're still doing all this. Uh, and then as we go down, some of these wires are a little tangled. They've been on my bench for a few weeks because of the uh, pandemic. Uh, Mila took a long ass time to get me parts. I've never waited that long for Mila parts on anything. So keep that in mind. Uh, So this guy, you can see how he clips in, and after he clips in, you can see where this goes. Just kind of see where everything's going from here. Um, you can see the wiring just goes right there, and there is a grommet that it interacts with in here. When you look at this, you can notice the grommet and the wire, all this interact. So despite whatever Mila is posting on their website or brochure, this is a sealed system, a very well sealed system. And you have to make sure this gasket just sits on here easily when you're doing this. Um, I've seen some technicians open this up and bo totally botch the gasket and then wonder why the machine is not working. So that is something to keep in mind. Oh, and there is one little part that I have seen many technicians forget. This, <laughs> that's the gas that is the gasket that interacts with the yoke uh, right here. You can push him in. You can grease him or not grease him. I don't personally think it's necessary with it being Teflon. Um, but yeah, that is that is the gasket that goes right there. You kind of want to, you want to put him on the inside of this yoke. He needs to line up with that. I don't remember how he goes exactly. All right, there we go. Everything is lined up with that yoke uh, gasket now. And there's a place on the side here for these wires and we'll do that in just a second. I wanna put the motor in its place which, and again, you can see every little thing has its place. There's even a little thing right there for the wires to go. And I really, really appreciate that about me. I really appreciate this machine because it is so intricate and they were able to mass produce it. That's kind of maybe the, the miracle about this machine is how mass produced this machine really has become uh, 
you know, I see people bitch and moan about the price of meal on this and that. And, and you cannot look at these parts and say the part the price is not justified. Uh, at least no sane person can. My least favorite part, which is this assembly right here. Haha! -ha. You have a new one of these. And I'll show you how to switch the serial number over in a second. Um, I think also one of the cool part is you can pull this off without pulling the brush roller out. Um, so that that I think is very, very cool as well. We can see where the wires and all that interact in there. I really just don't like how this is all sitting. Or maybe this does sit loose in there. Maybe it does. We're going to see. But what happens is these things can break. Uh, and that's covered under the seven-year warranty normally. But again, because of coronavirus, their warranty department really wasn't open. Uh, so I ended up just ordering this uh, from my local dealer. And see how everything just snapped into place. It's very seamless. That's good. And when you put this all in place, you don't have a loose cover like I do. Do not know why my cover is so loose. Oops, snap. Ah, because it's broken. Looks like this guy had these apparently cleaning ladies who were polished on the machine. We'll deal with that later. Um, but we want to just make sure we're everything is fine. Everything moves fine. That is good. So now we can snap everything back together. Put put the screws in, and we'll again we'll deal with the motor. It's gonna flop around while we're doing this. And all the screws are basically the same uh, in this machine, which I really really like. And if they had made this a little bit beefier, or put it just like an extra screw in here, I think it would have solved some issues. Ah, the screwdriver tried to go away. Right, now it does in there. Excellent. Um, so normally I would go do the top part and put the wheels on right now. The motor flopping around is pissing me off, so I'm going to actually do uh, the brush roller section next. Uh, just because I'm tired of this motor flopping around all over the place. Um, yes, yeah, so you can see he, he's no longer where I left him. And yeah, this can be frustrating for some technicians. Having to put this stuff in and out, in and out. And if there's any bit of crap in this, you just want to pull that out. That's like just some smudge that melted under there from the friction. Again, not necessarily from the belt, but from debris getting in there. And then the belt do two things. One, I'm going to brush it out with a toothbrush just to make sure there's no rocks or find the breeze stuck in it, which can happen. And then the second thing we're going to do is it's going to get some soap. This will quiet things down while it's running. So that's a, that's a good thing. Now, as I've said before, uh, you want to oil these or if they're high wear, uh, you can put a little bit of grease in oil combo. Which is what I'm doing because this this guy was pretty pretty high wear with his unit. And once they've been greased, they probably won't ever need to be greased again. These are gonna run like that for a long time. You might need to oil it, but that grease will be in there for a very long time. And just like any other brush roller, it's gonna spin freely like that. 
Um, now this part is available separate if you do only break this thing or melt this thing. And again, some people, they don't clean off their hair, their brush roller and gunk and stuff can get us caught in here. So I always just like make sure it's clean, which this one is. And oh, we are missing a spring. <laughs> ah, here it is. Phew, that spring is super important along with this wedge. Alright, I'm going to show how all this goes together and interacts now. Again, bring this to your local dealer. Do not attempt to do this at home. This machine. Alright. Alright, excellent. When you're popping this in, if you can see here, let's zoom the camera in. When we're popping these in, these springs, they line up with a detent in here, and they must be in there when you do it. Well, a lot of people take these apart and not line any of this up, or retime any of this, and bam. That, then when they go put back together, nothing works. And that's good. Put that motor cable is going in. Now we're just going to set the wedge in there. We're not actually going to push on it yet. In our screws, there's going to be two of them that are different from the rest. And these two right here go on this. Again, when you change the motor, I mean the brush roller, it comes with those. Uh, so keep that in mind. And these I would put in by hand. I would not do these with a drill because we are making a fine adjustment here. So keep that in mind. motor is kind of settled. Now we push down here. That puts some pressure on the motor. Now we take these down all the way. So now the motor is not going to be flopping around on us. This moves freely. All right, as we continue here, uh, you can put a little bit of grease on the inside of this and a little bit of oil on the inside of this wheel axle. These do pop out and you can push them back in. And if for some reason uh, the plastic tabs were a bit, there's enough plastic here to put a set screw in them if you need. Uh, so some people do complain about the base plate, the wheels falling out. It's never really been a concern of mine. I've never really seen it happen unless the machine has a real excessive amount of wear. Now there's a spring here and that is to apply pressure to that wedge. And when you put this guy back on, there is some very important tip I'm about to tell you. You're going to push the brush roller down on both sides, or from the middle like I am. You're going to put this on, and the brush roller should move freely in there. Now, we're going to put these screws in. like so. And then there's three little black ones that go in the front. You can do these with a drill. You can do these by hand. Depends on how much wear is on the machine. I'm just going to do them by hand. Again, all this moves freely, our uh, hose is in place, and that's another telltale. You can tell if somebody's been in the machine because they don't put that hose back in like I did. Just clips back in place. Now, I want to take a minute to talk about the base plate because it is unique to the machine and has several features that other machines don't have. Besides from housing the swivel wheels, you have a squeegee for bare floor. 
you have side suction ports. So rather than, uh, again, because your, your suction dumps about right here, um, so rather than having middle suction or being complete worried about the belt, they just put these little things in, and those are to suck in small debris for edge cleaning. And there's some rubber there to agitate really unfine surfaces. But again, they that never touches the hard floor. What is cool about this, we'll use this box here. So when it is on hard floor, you can see there is a gap right there to allow big objects to pass through. Uh, and then they, on hard floor, these plastic things are more in case it bottoms out there, though it is going to be on these soft rubber wheels on hard floor. So those are some features of the, the base plate you might not know, have known about. Um, going back to the rest of this machine, up here, you can, again, you can see the motor right there. It's now time to put some of the other pieces back together. All right, the, uh, the owner's cleaning people have broken part of that off. So again, that would have been covered under that seven-year warranty. So I was just attaching that in a Bojack manner. Uh, when you put this cover in, these clips are important to get back in. And for some reason, people do tend to uh, not put them in right. So keep that in mind when you're doing this. So you put the... Oh, one other thing. <laughs> clear it got away from me is that is filthy in front there clean that as much as I can so what's happened is the reflective part has worn off there well can't really fold it for that and we are gonna put this all back in here again that this is from somebody repeatedly hitting this really hard into a surface or a uh, piece of furniture or something. Again, this is all damage consistent with uh, somebody who doesn't own the machine, care about the machine. Cleaning people is the, uh, is the word we're looking for. So as that all begins to snap into place, and make all these sounds that are a little bit frightening for a lot of people, uh, but they're perfectly normal. In fact, you can always give it a couple love taps there that never hurt anything either so then there's two screws that go right there all right I start putting this together and I always forget this piece this keeps you from sticking your fingers in it uh, and getting them snapped in the swivel neck uh, is basically the purpose of this so you could in theory that would hurt um, it is not actually entirely necessary as I pull all this off again but he just sits right there uh, and when you put him on, that's where you want him to glide. Uh, there's no reason to put grease or anything on him. So keep that in mind when we are putting him back together. Yeah. Come on, honey. And like I said, as you put him back together, he's got several clips that are going to clip on various things and make all sorts of scary noises. like that and as he clips in there we go he's in this is for the motor to breathe if you're curious why there's a gap there so after all that's in we can put this on your most delicate setting hand torque the rest. Excellent. Next let's go on to timing the wheels and all that stuff. A lot of people don't understand this and again this is one of those things if you intended to Mila technical training or watch the DVD Mila gave to dealers this is uh, very clear and I'm sure they have a video portal. So if you look right there Let's zoom in right there. There is a timing mark there. And that timing mark 
moves in and out. Uh, and it's rather important that that timing mark be ever so elevated, like so, on the machine when you put it back. Now you can also, if you really, really want, you can mark the wheels with Sharpie as well. Uh, but we can see, again, this has to line up with that. And again, that will line up there. So when you put these wheels back, they must be timed properly. Because you see me futzing around with them. see the interaction of the teeth right there and what aligns with that so that one is now aligned like so so they're down now when we in the upright position it's locked they're leveled that's good these are flush that's good they're in their place now we can put the other two screws in uh, like so now somebody once accused me in a video of not understanding the timing, which I thought was kind of funny, but there you go. That's uh, Mila wheel timing there. Now, this is starting to look like a Mila upright. Everything's in its place, except this back part is exposed, and just like the front part had a guard for your hand, you have this. And this is probably one of the only really weak links uh, with me with this design um, it's made out of really flexible plastic again if it were to break it doesn't affect the functioning of the vacuum it's just the pretty but that's that's what that is right there and then there's two screws there so if you have any screws that are not pretty uh, on a machine rusted or something that's where to put them is in the section where nobody will see them And again, this plat back part is part of the casing. They will warranty that out. Um, so that is how to get the cleaner head operational with a Mila upright. All right, I want to talk about serial number and this plate here. Um, first thing you want to do, because it's been all over your grubby bench, is just clean it off a little bit with alcohol. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our heat gun.
on a lower setting. Just heat it up. Next we're going to just try to peel it off the best we can. Slow and steady wins, wins the race with this. And there we go. Uh, there's usually enough adhesive to put this thing back on here and have it stick the rest of its natural life in here. Now, for some reason, it doesn't stick. You can use 3M Super 77 adhesive to make him stick on there. So that's, again, give him a little bit more heat. Uh, but that's how I transfer them. And then I like to take uh, an object of my choice, in this case, this thing, uh, and just push in, make sure there's no air bubbles uh, in the sticky. And he's good to go on there. So that's how we transfer that. And I'll show you the part on here that was starting to crack right there. So that is the part that starts to crack on that. Next, uh, we have this stuff, the upper assembly. So we'll go ahead and push the upper assembly in place like that. Those of you who are astute have known I've moved the camera by now. We're going to put together the top section of the meal upright. I want to talk about some things about the top section. Um, first of all, this one had... Either an animal had pissed on it or gotten like flooded, like particularly really bad. Um, so if for some reason you ever have blockage or something, you can actually see this all comes apart right here. You can actually get in there, all that. So it's very accessible. Uh, you have the electronics up here. Um, I've never had to replace those, uh, so I, I didn't even open that up. Uh, so that just clips back in. Now, if you have your box of Mila bags, it came with two filters. One of them says air clean. Unless you have a Mila Maverick or Twist, throw it away. Um, next one says 7000 series, 8000 series. Well, this is a 7000 series machine, even though they now call it a U1 and have gotten rid of that designation. But that is, so you're just going to cut on that line. And if you see me struggling, it's because my scissors are not straight. Uh, great for cutting rope bad for cutting filters um, so and that filter will nicely sit in there like that and pop in so do that uh, if you're a technician save this for Visselwack service later um, so you have a spring on this you want to make sure this is sprung and I always just like to clean my springs the toothbrush and this bag holder goes in here like so really quite simple I say quite simple, and I misalign the spring. Um, so the bag holder also, it is important that it be just about level when you do this. Um, sometimes they bend or customers break them. But they do all sorts of things with them. So that is that on this side. The next part, uh, I think pretty much we are at the stage where we're going to start uh, joining the halves now. So I'm going to zoom the camera out, and we're just going to pan it up a little bit. Um, this gets really, really dirty in here. Uh, it originally came with grease on it. Uh, you can put grease on it. You can not put grease on it. I've done it both ways and had success both ways. Um, this one, I really, I washed in the sink, so I washed a lot of the grease that should have been in there out of it. So I'm just going to stick a tiny bit of grease in there just to help the seal again since I we're talking little dabs um, washed everything washed the grease out so 
Make sure it gets some in there. As you see me, there's no grease zerk or anything like that, unfortunately, for this. Uh, that would speed up this process. So, and uh, if the motor sucks up grease, it's not going to hurt anything. Um, so, there's a little bit of grease I'm putting right there. Clean my screwdriver off. All right, so this guy, it's very basic. He just attaches. He's eccentric. He attaches, uh, and he's going to clip in place. So when he's in place, you'll get to hear him clip, clip. And uh, you want to put the machine down now for this part. Um, or if you have something to wedge him up like this, that's good. Hey, that will work. Uh, next, we're just going to install the screws. Don't know if I'm going to be able to get in all this. Nope. My drill's not going to reach, so we're going to do this by hand. All right. I don't think this is going to show up well on camera, but there's four screws here that you do. There's actually like six or seven of them in the same area. But the two here and the two there, use your imagination where that neck lines up, where you want to put those screws. Um, next thing is you can see how the sliding mark works on that versus the cover. So when you put the cover on, he is actually going to go into place and we're going to we want to bend them in the slide marks on each side and push in the center as well. That's a healthy knife. There. There we go. And when that is all the way in there, that should be gliding now. Now we are attached. Put this in the upright position. All right, let's talk about the bag. And the rest of this on the on here, these guys, you don't really want to use a screwdriver, you want to use a coin. And what you're doing is you're just messing with these little keys here. Um, this only goes in one way. The fatter part goes on the bottom, like so. And then you're just going to give these half turn until you feel a click. And then this. Uh, hose again clearly marked you line up click half twist on the mark to pull off so very simple um, your wand nothing much there that just all sits there and all that clips on like so now if your hose clip breaks right there that sucks Again, that's the part that would be covered under warranty. The uh, other thing is there's a hole in the back here, the size of a T20, and you would push that, tilt it back, you would push that in to release the handle, which I'm going to put on here, and we are going to now see how everything turned out. But first, I'm going to put a bag in. Uh, I have the old proper style ripstop bag with the pleated top. That's what you want if you can find them. They're pretty much gone from the market now. So we put the bag in, clip in. The gap is normal. When the cover shuts, it seals the bag up. If the bag gets too heavy, that bag will sag. So keep that in mind. Let's see how she is. Test the full bag check. Now normally I would adjust the full bag check there. We're not going to be adjusting the full bag check on this particular unit. Uh, 
because it's going to be set to sea level. Oh, that sounded a little loud. That HEPA filter it just drops in and the cover again is what puts it in place. That's better. And that is how you service a Mila U1 um, or S7 cleaner. So if you've bared with this whole video, I want to thank you so much. Hit the thumbs up button, consider donating to our Patreon, and check out one of our Mila repair videos that I will put around here.